I'm delighted and very grateful to have been invited to officiate at this important conference, the 15th National Business Conference, which is being hosted in this beautiful city of Francis Town, the gateway to our strategic creative partner in the north, Zimbabwe. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to our distinguished international guests and wish them a very pleasant stay here. And refreshed to hear that you heard a presentation yesterday from Estonia in which they also confirmed they use or apply electronic voting. <laughs> Allow me also to commend Botswana, Business Botswana for its tireless efforts in ensuring consistent convening of this conference on a biennial basis as a platform for government and business to engage on issues of national interest with a view to accelerating the growth and the diversification of our country's economy. The theme of this conference, Breakthrough to the a High Income Botswana, the role of the private sector in charting the course, is indeed most appropriate and timely as it is aligned to my government's roadmap of addressing current challenges facing Botswana, including poverty, unemployment, bureaucratic red tape, and the quality of our education, to name but a few. The roadmap ultimately entails concerted efforts to propel this country on a very serious note towards our desired destination by 2036, as espoused in our national long-term vision. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me at the outset indicate that a national transformation strategy for Botswana is being formulated as we speak. The aim of this strategy will, among other things, be to seek practical and effective ways of enhancing the competitiveness of this country, an essential ingredient to ensuring productivity and attainment of high income status. Simply put, the strategy is to define how we reach the status of a developed nation by 2036. In the attainment of this stage of development, there is no doubt that the private sector has a critical role to play in charting this course. Ladies and gentlemen, the demands of becoming a highly competitive economy are enormous. They range from the need to ensure availability of modern and functioning infrastructure, including transport, energy, water, information and communications, technology. Of equal importance are effective and efficient public institutions, a stable macroeconomic environment, and high, high quality, as well as relevant education. Innovation, technological readiness, and the ability to produce competitive goods de demanded by both local and foreign markets are critical aspects of the competitive economy that we aspire for. Since government and the private sector are partners in development, or so I'd like to believe, this particular conference will afford us the opportunity to thoroughly reflect on these issues with a view to mapping a way forward on how to jointly address them. I'm happy to note that the participants at this conference are from diverse backgrounds and have extensive experience in business and the many issues that are relevant to the theme. I'm told that we, are also, that we also have external experts whose knowledge and experience will in no small measure enrich the deliberations at this important gathering. Distinguished guests, the role of government is not, and I repeat and underline, is not to run business, but rather to play a facilitative role for the private sector to grow the economy and create jobs for our citizens. To this end, my government remains committed to making doing business in Botswana smooth, seamless, enjoyable through a regulatory framework that creates a conducive environment for business to flourish. 
It is my intention to the extent possible to make through job shadowing, internships, attachments, and on the job training, as many of my senior technocrats as business suave as possible. This will be done through internal and external placements. I must emphasize that first and foremost, we have to deal with the bureaucratic red tape, which is one of the major issues that make it difficult for business enterprises to set up and grow in Botswana. This includes policies, regulations, and laws that cut across various government ministries, but are not coordinated, nor are they complementary. In this respect, all ministries have been directed to scan such laws and regulations in their areas of responsibility with a view to identify those which are an impediment to the achievement of our policy goals. You too, in the private sector, are hereby invited to do so and submit through your leadership as soon as possible. This action will also require serious improvements in the productivity of our public service. In this context, government is embarking on public sector reforms that are aimed at improving service delivery and policy implementation across the structures of government. Dedicated efforts will also be required towards the fight against corruption. In this regard, in the near future, and we had a brief cabinet meeting this morning, I can attest to it, we actually want it by the next parliament coming. A bill on the declaration of assets and liabilities to be tabled in parliament. Which law will cover politicians and senior public officers? This move will enhance transparency and accountability and therefore contribute to investors' confidence in this country. To this end, I wish to appeal to captains of industry to assist government in fighting this scourge of corruption. It is a well-known fact. Some business enterprises also contribute to corruption by bribing officers or persons, something which is completely unacceptable. Distinguished guests, one of the issues that has been impeding the attraction of foreign direct investment has been our immigration outlook, which we have discussed several times before at the High Level Consultative Council, the HLCC. In response to your concerns, we have decided to improve the turnaround times for the issuance of visas residence and work permits. We are also considering issuing visas on arrival, provided applicants meet the set requirements. In addition, government has decided to waive visa requirements for foreigners who possess diplomatic passports, and in some instances, who possess official passports. <clears throat> I'm also pleased to inform you that work is underway to develop a policy that will improve the turnaround time for the processing of applications for environmental impact assessments in order to speed up the setting up of businesses. <laughs> thus greatly reducing the cost burden on investors. Government is also reviewing the Environmental Impact Assessment Act itself with a view to eliminating what amounts to discretionary Im impediments, sometimes at the political level, which could bring into question our very credibility. <laughs> that, I can assure you, is going to end very soon. Director of Ceremonies, land is a very important factor of production on which we have had very restrictive laws and reg regulations pertaining to its use. In this regard, Government is working on legislation that will fast track the processing of applications for the change of land use so that landowners can benefit from its optimal utilization. <laughs> Our target date for the finalization of this law is December 2018. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, government continues to put in place policies, programs, and strategies aimed at diversifying the economy. 
the special economic zones policy and the cluster development model in critical sectors like tourism, beef, financial services, agriculture, and mining are such examples that are intended to promote economic diversification in this country, thus creating the much needed jobs. And if you're lost for what I say, remember Michael Porter who came to this conference a number of years ago, or read up. We are also committed to enroll more students in vocational and technical training, as well as promoting increased use of information, communication, technology in all schools. Of course, the prerequisite for finishing off the last mile of connectivity will be taken account of. Government is surely determined to address the problem of skills mismatch that the private sector continues to raise as a legitimate concern in order to produce graduates who are ready for the job market. And likewise, we expect the private sector to do the same for itself because many private sector uh, participants are involved in education and skills development. Distinguished guests, in their regular reviews of middle income countries such as Botswana and their path to further economic growth, <clears throat> economists invariably talk about a middle income trap. They define the middle income gap trap as a growth slowdown that tends to affect countries when they reach middle income levels. In this regard, global partnerships are critical for the advancement of our economic development. Hence, we're doing all we can to source funds from our development partners, as well as our friends in the context of South-to-South -South cooperation, to implement projects that can unlock the potential of this economy. In this respect, we have secured approximately 340 million pula from the People's Republic of China as a grant during my first and recent state visit to that republic. This will finance key infrastructure projects. We also discussed and agreed to finance critical roads and rail projects to, ena and to, enable, business in to enable businesses, including uh, export, businesses including those who export to and through Botswana undertake their business. In the same vein, the experience of advanced economies affirms that innovation is a very important driver of economic activity and wealth creation. Consequently, one looks forward to solutions on improving the role of science and technology, including increasing the share of science and engineering graduates, as well as attaching our people in advanced economies and key institutions for exposure and development. I am pleased to note that during this conference, we're going to hear some global perspectives from both Botswana working abroad, as well as visitors from other parts of the world. Their insights on how to get things done should be received with open minds. It is my sincere hope that during the discussions, we're going to draw lessons from countries that left it too late and found themselves either stuck in perpetual middle income status or regressing to lower income levels. I therefore wish to highlight some key factors that should not escape your attention as you deliberate on Botswana's transformation path to high income status. These factors are productivity, quality of education, innovation, skills development, finance and banking, diversification of exports, and a willingness to learn from other countries and firms. A strategic imperative that we must always bear in mind is that the sustainable growth of our economy will depend on our accessing of global markets. Hence the need for our public and private sector to be in sync with the requirements and intricacies of the global marketplace. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I'd like to urge the private sector to up its game in its contribution to the development of this country and the diversification of the economy of this nation. This will contribute immensely to employment creation, particularly for the youth who constitute a majority of our population. Let me also inform the conference of my decision to start counting the number of Botswana registered patents going forward, among other things. Let me also take this opportunity to thank all the participants of this conference 
for their commitment and interest in the economic development of Botswana. On that note, I wish you a very fruitful conference whose resolutions and re recommendations will inform us in formulating appropriate and relevant policies which will enhance our operations. And I eagerly await those to be presented by the Minister of Investment Trade to Cabinet for decision taking for that's what we're employed to do. <laughs> this is the only way we can reach a high income status by 2036 as a nation. With these few very remarks, and I have the single honor to declare this conference officially open. I thank you enormously for your attention and patriotic duty. <laughs>